Joseph Marigold had never been a man for wasted words. He knew of many like minded colleagues who tried to get to know their clients while doing business, but he preferred precision. Indeed, Joseph Marigold was a very precise man. He woke up at 6 a.m. every morning, allowed himself 10 minutes for his morning sanitation ritual, 5 minutes for breakfast, the same high-fiber cereal every day, and then a 30-minute jog. The next hour was destined for recreation, but at 7.45 exactly, he left to meet his with his client for the day. He usually finished and was home by 8 p.m., upon which he retired to bed. Joseph Marigold was a very, very punctual man. Today was no different. Dressed in a rather unremarkable Tuesday brown suit, carrying his prized leather suitcase under one arm, Joseph left his suburban home and walked fifty paces, upon which he turned and waved at his elderly leaning neighbor. Allocating himself his Tuesday morning smile, he strode to the, re the rest of the six hundred paces to the bus stop. The daily fifteen minutes was waiting time later. He shrugged to... He shrugged to the regulated five degrees of elevation and made the daily decision to walk to work. This walk comprised a 500, pace, a 500 paces walk eastward until reaching a park. Stepping on the path, Joseph stepped aside to let a cyclist pass, nodding congenially and went on his way. The walk was the usual ten minutes with five minutes deducted to, spent in, on enjoying the beauty of nature. Leaving the park, Joseph would find himself on a busy thoroughfare leading in to the commercial district of the city, stopping in awe of the monolith monolithic towers. Thirty-two seconds precisely. He switched the suitcase from his right hand to his left hand, as per custom, and continued on his way. This part of the walk was one he generally enjoyed. The regular angles of commercial architecture, the uniform gray colors, and, indeed, the uniformly gray people bustling on the same pathways they trod every day for years, everything planned, everything regulated, everything controlled. Assembling his facial features in the schedule, the contented smirk, he walked the routine 800 steps, turned 90 degrees, and walked into a small cafe. Good morning, John, he announced, as always, and strode to the counter. He gave the owner the owner gave Joseph his usual bemused smile and replied the same way he had for the last three years. Morning. Good morning, Joe. It's Joseph, was the accustomed response. This accompanied Joseph. Perf this accomplished Joseph performed the two minutes and thirty seconds scanning of the menu, remembering to hum Yankee Doodle Dandy to himself and making the regulated two mistakes. He asked for his daily black coffee, no sugar. The proprietor obliged and asked if, as always, he wanted it to go. Nodding his assent, assent, Joseph waited the 51 seconds, took the cup, and waving, left the cafe. Finding himself on the street once more, just decided, Joseph walked the 23 steps and then stopped to take a sip. Too hot, 73 steps, pleasantly warm. Drinking as he went, Joseph enjoyed the allocated five minutes for pondering the nature of the world, deciding once again that one couldn't know the future, one always has to live in the present. Stumbled on the schedule, three steps of the scheduled loose paving stone, and these, and spilt the scheduled five milliliters of coffee on his stoop. Damn, he stated, for damn was the Tuesday curse to no one in particular, finished the walk to his place of work. This was Joseph Marigold's daily routine, and, if a little obsessive, seems perfectly normal, perfectly precise, as Joseph thought to himself, every day at 8.47 exactly, precisely. One had to live in the present. One cannot plan for the future. This sentiment you will hear on a regular basis. However, Joseph knew that it was a sentiment that was incomplete. For all time is unreliable. The past, the present, the future cannot be tamed by plans or years. The only thing that can be controlled is the perception of time, which Joseph, upon making this realization, set out doing one day at a time, and of course, precisely. It was Wednesday morning. Joseph was, 
par for the course, wearing his Wednesday gray suit and holding his prize leather suitcase under one arm. Again Joseph went about his routine, walking, stopping to wave his neighbor, for, who, for her part, had stopped waving back two years ago when she died. Wearing his Wednesday morning smile, he walked once more to the bus stop, waited fifteen minutes in vain for a bus service that had changed its own schedule four years ago, and walked to the park. Moving for and nodding to a phantom cyclist, Joseph strolled through, enjoying the regulated ad enjoying the regulated admiration of the beauty of the trees and grass. Emerging through the, to the busy thoroughfare, Joseph, contemplating the joys of the uniform colors, angles, and people, traveled to his cafe and ordered his usual coffee. The proprietor, Edward, had gotten used to this charade since buying the place a year ago, and simply went about serving his customer. First too hot, then pleasantly warm. Joseph enjoyed his coffee, recycling his scheduled thoughts, stumbling once more over a paving stone that had long since been repaired. He spilt it once more, cursed once more, blast, for it was Wednesday, and paced the rest of the day to his place of work. He reached into his pocket and produced a golden wa pocket watch. Stroking it tenderly, he opened its face and giggled quietly, his eyes following the sumptuous curves and valleys in the cracks of the glass. A path his eyes had never stopped following for the last thirty years lingered ecstatically on the broken hands, haloed by the suspicious brown stain. This part of the routine was completed as he walked into the crumbling, dilapidated, bil dilapidated building, stepping over the remains of police tape, and placing his feet in the same pattern of steps through the thick layer of dust he had walked into the ro he walked to the rotting receptionist's desk, greeted the receptionist, and wrote his name in the mil mildewed ledger. His name was the only entry, each day at the same time, the time his pocket watch always announced. Walking to his office, Joseph hailed, nodded, and waved to his long-deceased colleagues and stepped into his office, hanging up his jacket and placing it on the rack that had long since rotting or rotted away. Joseph turned to greet his client for the day and placed his prize other suitcase on the desk, pausing for a moment to enjoy the regular angles of the lock. With his finger, he opened it and basked in the metallic shine that illuminated in the dark, moldy room. Yes, he thought to himself, as he took the scalpel, it is very important to be precise.